Hi, welcome to Greedy 3D. I remember some time ago we did this, the Captain America Endgame Shield, and you can find the making of that video in the Greedy 3D video collection. Uh, today, though, we're going to be making this, the Captain America Shield. I'm going to make it all on an end of five. I'll show you where I got it, how to make it, how to paint it. Stay tuned. The version I've got today, I've got from the Etsy website. Now there's lots of free versions of the Captain America shield all over the place. You can find them at Thingiverse and, and, and sites of similar ilk. But this version I liked because it splits it into 11 parts uh, in two versions. There's a thinner version that you can just use to hang on your wall. Or there's a thicker version which is a bit more robust that you can use if you want to do cosplay. Now I've gone for the more robust version purely because I just wanted to see how it came out and I've gone for the best possible uh, quality of the file that I could find on there. And here we have it loaded into uh, Ultimaker Cura, as you can see. Now, if we tried to print this at 100%, it would not fit on my build plate. You can see that. And I've got an end of three and an end of five. And most people have got that similar kind of size. Now, reducing it down to 75%, We'll get it to fit nicely on the build plate and we'll also give you a really, really good sized shield and um, you're not losing too much of it. Now, if you've got a bigger printer like the CR10 and you can get it on in one go, then that's great, marvellous. But for me, 75% is absolutely fabulous. Um, I've just placed it down on the flat edge to print, as you can see there. Uh, and the other thing is, if you really wanted to, you could probably get away with printing two or three of the same uh, design on the same build plate. Now I haven't done this, I've done this one at a time and I'll show you why in a moment, but technically you could do that. And here we see the end of five, it's printing it nicely. Now the settings I've used on here are just standard settings. I've used no supports at all and I've laid it flat on the surface. Just put some, um, as you can see, printer's tape down to give it a little bit of support. It's 200 degrees uh, for the filament and 50 degrees for the actual uh, build plate. And I'm using some tin Mori PLA, which I got from Amazon to do the printing. Um, I'm quite happy with the standard print quality because I'm going to be doing a lot of sanding and a lot of finishing at the end of it. So I'm going to pick up any loss in any surface on that sanding aspect right at the end. And there we go, there's the end result. Um, just standard quality looks absolutely fine. Now there's some marks as you saw on the bottom lower segment of that, but that will sand out nicely. And I'm not too fussed because as I say, most of my uh, effects are gonna be post workout when I sand it down. Now here's the reason why I only did one at a time, print failures. We've all experienced them on our PLA printers, but at least here, I've only lost the one segment. The last segment's now been printed and it's the circle piece. I changed uh, the setting slightly in, in essence that I had a support structure and I didn't use tree supports, I used normal supports which gave it a lot more rigidity uh, for this to print and it printed in one go again at 75% to match the rest of them. And something I've used to connect them together, I have used some super glue, some Gorilla Glue, but I've also used a little bit of plastic welding that I've never used before really. Um, so a hot soldering tool, and I've just uh, touched the edges together and given it uh, some strength. Now there was a few problems getting it to actually meet, so this uh, welding technique really did give me a lot of help and held it together uh, in a firm fashion. And now you can see that I'm going to be filling the gaps that are inevitably going to be there on any design or project like this. And I'm just using some Ron Seal wood filler to do that, putting it on and just uh, liberally squishing it in between the gap and then spreading the outer layer on. Now, you know, necessarily more isn't better, but I like to really lay it on thick and make sure that all those gaps are covered. And I will be sanding this off when it goes off. Um, it takes about a day for it to go off properly. Now they say you can sand it in two hours, but I've left it for a day just to make sure it's absolutely firm as a worm. And um, that's filled all the gaps that you saw in the uh, pre-production uh, version there. And uh, over to the sanding stage. Now I'm using my trusty uh, sander here that I always use and it's a Black & Decker mouse sander and, and I got this one from Amazon, B&Q are doing them, they're around about £20 mark but they're absolutely great. The sandpaper I'm using is, a, is an 80 grit to start with just to rough it up just to get the majority of the wood filler off. Now there's a few bits of process to do here. I'm going to give it a bit of a sanding process there. That's not the last time I'm going to sand it but it's the last time you're going to see me sanding it because I've sanded it with different grades of paper 
going from 60 all the way up to 180 and it's a bit of a uh, bit of a process really of sanding it using some filler primer spraying it in filler primer letting it dry uh, filling any of the gaps that I've missed with some more of the wood filler and then repeating the the sanding process using a finer grit sandpaper filler primer filling the gaps letting it dry sanding it down I think you get the picture where I'm going um, you can put as much work into this as you want to or as little work as you want to but the end results will be dependent on how much work you put into the main body of the shield and there we go there's the filler primer um, high coat filler primer around about seven or eight quid off Amazon but you can get it in all sorts of places and it is literally a case as I said previously of just uh, getting it on there and what the filler primer does is it fills some of the smaller gaps but it also highlights some of the problems with the shield to allow you to then do the filling and the sanding and the repeating process again uh, for me I love it because it just it does exactly that highlights the errors and the problems and you can see them at this stage rather than when the uh, the nice paint goes goes on. It's now time to vibranium up the shield and we're using some Rust-Oleum metallic chrome paint. Uh, just some light coats of this and uh, look at the effect straight away. I love this paint. It goes on really thickly so you only need quite thin coats but oh it does really do the job and there we go. Light coats all over and uh, it's gone from being a horrible yellow uh, primer filled color to vibranium. Keep going, just concentrate on the areas that you're going to need the silver to be, which is your start and your, min your middle uh, ring. But give it a good base layer all over, as I think then when the, you put the rest of the paint on, it really does help it to shine. Next stage is the masking process and the bit that I probably enjoy the least, but it's quite nice when you do the big reveal. Um, so use some just normal masking tape, as low tack as you can get really, and a really, really sharp knife. I find if you lay it on as long as you can across the edges and the next thing you need to do is try to use your fingernail to, to highlight the edges of the shield there and then take your really, really sharp knife, as sharp as you can find one, and, and cut the paper through there that way. Um, you'll find by doing it that way, it takes less work and it peels off in a in a straighter line and less frayed because you know once your paint goes on if you've got a frayed edge that's all you're going to see so take a bit of time with this stage as i say it's probably the most laborious part but once you've done it and you've peeled it all off you're ready for the next section which is going to be the first or first layer of color to go on there and here we are, I'm using some uh, metallic red paint that I picked up again from the, the mighty Amazon. And it's just a case of some liberal light coats. Now make sure you shake up this metallic paint really well. If you don't, it gets a bit globby and it starts to run into the masking tape. Now don't be too surprised when you take the tape off. If you find some of the tape has run through, you know, you're gonna have to do some touching up at the end. That goes without saying, you can't get lucky enough to get it all done in one go. Plenty of uh, plenty of layers there. I've done about three layers, leaving about 20 minutes in between. And here's the bit I like. Just peel off that masking tape. Do it carefully. And again, don't be too surprised if some of the paint underneath comes off. I've let it dry in between layers about 24 hours, probably a little bit longer, but I still lost some of the, the colour underneath. As you can see, a little bit of a patch there. Now, masked up the rest of it, I've left the centerpiece done and I've used a black bag to cover the majority of the shield. So that means I put less masking tape on the shield itself, which again, reduces the risk of pulling the paint off. And, uh, and I'm just using some blue paint, some blue metallic from Amazon, funny enough, and squirted on in a couple of really light layers. And that's the painting done. And now onto my favorite part, the reveal. This is where you get to take the masking tape off and the, uh, the black bin liner that you've used. Now do this carefully doesn't matter how carefully you do it there's always a risk you're going to take some of the underlying paint off and you can see there that some of the reds come off even with a 48 hour uh, wait in between um take the centerpiece off and it's done okay so we finished it's all done it was a bit of an epic build it's taken about seven days maybe seven to nine days to do um it's been printing virtually around the clock to get all the pieces done then with the masking the painting uh, yeah i would say the best part of just over a week and a bit 
the cost of building well luckily I had the paint so I had all the masking tape I had everything I needed except the PLA so I've had to buy two rolls of that so the whole project has cost me 40 quid if I had to buy the paints on top of that I think you're looking at a total price of around 70 to 80 quid but I don't think that's a bad price when you consider what you get at the end you get a full-size Captain America shield so I think it's time that we had a look at the end result I hope you enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe